With most things, there's a beginning and an end. Or maybe you could say a first and a last. And I thought it'd be interesting today to look at some of Brea's first and last. Well, actually only one of its last, but it's the last that I think that's gonna surprise you. Our first first, though, kind of has to do with the downtown. So why don't we head off now to the corner of Birch and Brea Boulevard. Back there behind me is one of Brea's landmarks, the old but refurbished Brea Welcomes You sign that hung over the boulevard for over 60 years. But did you know that it wasn't the first Brea sign? Yep, there was an earlier one. It stood just about where I'm now standing here at the border between Bray and Fullerton. Up there over the street and supported by cables was a sign that simply said, Brea. It was put up in the 1920s and probably by the Chamber of Commerce, but that's all I've ever been able to find out about it. It's one of our early landmarks that's pretty much been forgotten over the years. Speaking about landmarks, one that hasn't been forgotten is Old City Hall, built in 1928 in City Hall Park. No, it wasn't the first city hall in town because that was up the street in the Stuhl building. But the reason I included it in my list of first is because it was the first structure placed in the official Brea Historic Resources Register. And what's that? Well, back in the early 1990s, the city began this program to officially designate certain structures and landmarks to be worthy of preservation. And naturally chosen to be first on the list was this special building. Since then, 12 other structures and things have been added to the list, including the Plunge, built in 1929, Pioneer Hall, which sat in two other places in the city before being moved to its present location on Elm Street, the 1930 Old American Legion Building, Laurel School, built in 1922, Brea Junior High, which was built six years earlier, some historic homes on Redwood Avenue, and Brea's 1923 Seagraves fire truck. Since we're here at City Hall, I thought it might be kind of fun to take a quick look starting in 1928 to see just how little this building has changed over the last nine decades. Except for a couple paint jobs and now removed storage structure on the side and some appearing and disappearing plants, you'll see that it's almost like you're looking at the same photo over and over again. Today, because of some fairly recent restoration work preparing it to be Brea's Scout House, this building looks almost exactly like it did three quarters of a century ago. Besides containing the city offices, City Hall was also the site of the fire department. But did you know that back before 1917, when Brea became an official city, our first fire department was located in a small shed on Ash Street next to the present day parking structure? If we could go back to 1914, I'd now be standing about midway between the 1912 La Habra Valley Bank and the Delaney Building and Rooming House built about the same time. Speaking of the Delaney Building, back in 1915, there was a big fire downstairs in the rear of the bakery. And because there was so much damage, the bakery's owner decided to move and build a separate bakery building a block away on Brea Boulevard or Pomona Avenue. Later on, we come to know that new building simply as Sam's Place. Right back there behind me is the intersection of Brea Boulevard and Ash Street, Brea's first intersection. Right now it's just another intersection on the boulevard, but back before 1920, it was so important that streets in town were either designated north or south, depending upon where they were in relation to here. Also, all cross streets running east and west were named in alphabetical order from this spot. For instance, going south, there's A. Ash, B. Birch, C. Cedar, Cedar is now called Imperial, D. Date, E. Elm, and F. Fir. Going north from here, there's A. Ash, B. Bracken, C. Cypress, and D. Deodora, or Lambert. You've heard about some of Brea's first, but now it's time to talk about its last, and it's that little structure back there behind me. Have any idea what it is? Well, it's the last outhouse in Brea. In the early years of the town, they were all over the place because indoor plumbing was really a luxury. In 1918, though, the city passed this ordinance outlawing them because, as it says here, they had become prejudicial to health. For some reason, though, this outhouse remained over the years. 
and sits just where it was first built over 85 years ago. Of course, it's not used anymore for the reason it was built, but nevertheless, it's a reminder of a Brea that once was. For this Did You Know segment of Video Brea Line, I'm Brian Saul.